Welcome back to the bluegrass on this cold and windy January day. Now you might say, Stoney, what are you doing up at the park on a cold and windy, rainy January day? Well, we're up here because we had one day of great weather last week and it got us all in the mode of doing some springtime adventuring. And you can't do springtime adventuring without a little bit of wintertime work. All right, so let's go into detail about what I mean about putting in that winter work. Come on, Tempe. Now, you guys are familiar with Tempe because you've seen her in a previous video. Now, for a lab puppy at 18 or 19 weeks old, she's about as good as what a puppy can be. Her uh, basic vocabulary is top notch. Her physical skills on the exercise of small challenges course is top notch. Her ability to interact with dogs and all types of people, again, top notch, okay? Like, I'm really happy with her progress. So you might ask, well, Stoney, if you're happy with her, your pro with her progress at your kennel, and your kennel is a big open air environment with lots of dogs, lots of people, lots of activity, why are you out at the park in the middle of January on a super cold and rainy day? Well, the reason we're out here, guys, is because as awesome a socialization experience as my kennel is, it's still only one environment, okay? So what we like to do when dogs are at a place for training is we like to take them out and proof them in the real world. And that means coming up here to the park, and that means sometimes we've got to come up here to the park during inclement weather. And you might say, well, Stoney, I don't understand why the inclement weather part of it is so important. The inclement weather part is important because an environment is different based on the environmental factors. Okay, like see all this plastic and metal right here? Believe me, touching this metal is a completely different experience when it's 25 degrees than when it's 70 degrees or 90 degrees, okay? The little creek that we use here to introduce dogs to, to, to water environments, okay? It's usually about this deep. Today, it's about this deep with a lot of current going through it, okay? So this park that you guys have seen on 50 or 60 of my videos, okay, it's a different park from the dog's perspective every time the weather changes, at least when they're in this, you know, uh, kind of early developmental stage, okay? So, what we do, and what we've done today, is come up here, okay, to a park that Tempe's been to a lot of times before, and we're engaging in activities that she's done a lot of times before. Come on, easy, okay? But it's a different experience. And that's what I want you to understand. I know it's winter time. I know it's hard to get out and find new and interesting things to do when the day is, isn't very long and it gets dark early. You know, I understand that. But you can take the little spots that you go to during the nice weather, find you some rainy days, find you some super hot days, find you some super cold days, go to that same spot. And trust me, for a puppy, it's a completely different socialization experience. Just a second ago, we were up on the playground equipment and I was trying to make the point of how weather affects a puppy's perception of a socialization activity. You know, if they go to climbing around on the metal and plastic equipment and it's hot or it's cold or it's rainy or it's dry, all of those things are different socialization experiences. But to drive that point home, we've came down here to this little creek that you guys have seen in dozens and dozens of videos. Now, the reason that you see this particular creek in lots of videos is because we come to this park a lot of the time, you know. My, my children love to play with their friends up on the equipment. Uh, they love to go skate down at the skate park. I mean, it's just a great little park to come do some fun stuff with puppies. But normally, this little section of creek right here is only about ankle deep, you know? But I want you to think about, <laughs> like, not that I have very long legs, but like, look how deep it is today. So from the puppy's perspective, from this puppy's perspective, she's already tromped around in this creek when it was only ankle deep water probably 10 or 15 times, okay? She comes to the same park expecting the same thing, and when she gets out of the truck and she runs over here and thinks about climbing across this uh, little gully here, what she runs into from her perspective is a raging river. Now let me explain to you what I mean by a raging river. Now normally this little area here has water, like I said it's not very deep, but more importantly the water is still, okay? Guys, one of the big problems that we run into as we move into these springtime adventures, especially if you live in an area like I live, where when you go hiking, there's like little creeks that if it rains at all, they go from basically being dry stream beds to, to having a lot of current. And let me, let me illustrate what I mean by having a lot of current. So watch, I'm going to take this, this thing here. Normally, if I bring a puppy over here, and I toss a dummy out in the water, the dummy just sits there perfectly still. And so this is a great place to introduce the idea of fetching, but then like say today, 
you'll notice that once this dummy gets into the stream, it starts heading down the creek. And then as the, as the pool gets shallower, okay, just keep tracking this uh, dummy and watch what happens. See how it's kind of being lazy, but it's moving? Okay, here in a second, it's going to hit this little bit of a, of, a, of a shallow spot, and all of a sudden it's going to get real quick, no, and start moving. Go ahead and track it right through the culvert. And it's going to go through the culvert, okay? <laughs> well, maybe it's not because no name's going to get it. Okay, that's all right. Come back over here to me, cameraman. <laughs> Listen, I went through a lot of mental setup to get that ready so that you guys could see that, that dummy pick up speed and head through the culvert because I was trying to make a point. All right, so we're going to use the same spot but under different environmental conditions to create a different socialization opportunity for our puppy. Okay, so first thing we'll do is uh, we'll just kind of walk around over here on the edge a little bit. Oh, and see if we can encourage her to come with us. She might come with us or might not. Because, like I said, the water's cold and uh, there's a lot of current to it. And so I've got my long line just so I can kind of guide her and get her moving in the right direction. <laughs> Woohoo! <clears throat> and encourage her to follow along. Okay. <clears throat> I'll go to a narrow spot. <laughs> Did you see that cameraman? Right. Now, see what that was, guys? Now, normally, Tempe would just walk right down here and just walk right up the other side. But she's worried about this current. Okay. So I'm going to move over here, maybe try to get her to <laughs> maybe try to get her to walk through it. And what she's worried about is the same thing you would be worried about, you know, is that if you get in this current, you're going to get washed down there through that culvert. All right, let's walk over here where maybe she can't jump so far. Oh. Let me see. Come on, Tempe, you can do it. Oh, so I'm going to have to make myself interesting here. Come on, Tempe. <laughs> Oh my gosh, you're such a good dog. We we'll come back over this way a little bit. <laughs> come on, Tippy, you can do it. Come on. Come on. Come on, come on. Come on. Oh, now, look, so right there, she's made a decision that this creek, from her perception, which is now a raging river, cannot be crossed very easily. And you can see. So we're going to come over here and give her a piece of dog crack and see if that changes her mind. Okay, so I'm gonna give her a piece of dog crack and then I'm gonna let her know that I have another one in waiting. So, now, come on, will you do it for some dog crack? Come on, Tempe. Come on, come on, you can do it. Come on. Oh my gosh, come on. And we're gonna give her a little pull. Oh, now she's getting it. Now she's figuring it out. You know, now she's starting to understand that yes, this change in environment, it takes a little adjustment, but once she starts to get some experience under her belt, now she'll have it cataloged and she'll understand how to approach new and novel environmental uh, impediments. Come back over here. Oh, come on, Tempe. <laughs> oh, she's cracking me up. Good girl. Oh. Whoa! Uncle Stoney's going to get washed away if he doesn't watch out. Come on, Tempe! Come on, come on! Come on! There we go. That's what I was looking for right there. You see how I got her right here in the middle of the stream? Right? And so what she's doing, she's almost at a neutral buoyancy point. You know, that's where, like, where the water gets up on her chest and just kind of lifts them up off the stream bed a little bit. But I got her out here, and uh, now she's starting to acclimate a little bit. So maybe I can walk down through here. Good. Let's see if I can get her back out into this, oh, into this channel a little bit. Come on, Tempe. Very nice. Just walk on out here. You don't have to jump so far. Come on, you can do it. Very nice. See, that's what I'm after right there. Good girl. Now we get to a little safety island here. Good. This will kind of be our little rest spot. Good. Now you can really see what I'm talking about with this current right here, you know. And she's being smart to jump over it, but I want her to understand that sometimes, like, she might get herself in a position where she can't jump over or out of the current. So, you know, that's why I'm going to use my leash 
to try to encourage her to come over here and learn to deal with this. Oh, you're a very good dog. See, and we can just stand here for a minute, you know. Teach her. She doesn't need to panic. She doesn't need to jump and, and, and go crazy. She can deal with this current as long as she keeps her wits about her. Good. Walk up this way a little bit. <laughs> She's trying to outsmart me, <laughs> which isn't too hard, really. Oh, come on. And look at this. Tell me this doesn't look like a, like a river rafting trip right here. Oh, very good. This right here is what I wanted. Right here, guys. You see how we're just standing right here in the middle of this... Uh, <laughs> raging torrent of a stream. Good girl. Now see if I can walk her up this here. All I'm doing here is just acclimating her. And like I said, this is a spot we've been in 10 or 15 times. Same spot. It always has water, okay? But the water this time is way different. But it didn't take Tempe very long to acclimate <clears throat> because we've done a really good job of teaching her that we would never put her in a spot where she couldn't win very nice all right now since it's only 25 or 30 degrees well i guess it's a little warmer than that but we're going to go ahead and finish this session off with just a little bit of swimming up here in the calm good get it right here very nice right here to a buoyancy point hold her out here very good. Oh, I'm gonna come out over here. Oh, come on, come on, we're almost done. Very nice. Dang, you are turning into an old pro with this. Good puppy. Oh my gosh, you're such a fine animal. All right, guys, I hope today's short video drove home two key points. Number one, if you plan on doing some springtime adventuring, you better put in a little wintertime work. And number two, that wintertime work isn't really hard to find. All you have to do, go out to your local spots like this park and make sure that you take advantage of those local spots under a wide variety of weather conditions. Because every time the weather changes, the puppy's perception of the activity changes with it. Okay, all right, now we're back to the kennel.